You can watch this broadcast anytime on our Facebook or YouTube channel. Members from the 103rd Rescue Squadron took part in a search and rescue tactical vehicle training course outside Salt Lake City, Utah, mid-October, learning to navigate adverse terrain to access patients anywhere under any conditions. On Friday, October 29th, the 106 Rescue Wing held a career day, helping potential candidates learn about opportunities the Air National Guard has to offer. On November 4th, Staff Sergeant Brian Garano paid a visit to Elmhurst Hospital in Queens, where he served as part of a team from the 103rd Rescue Squadron that was dispatched to assist the hospital staff there at the outset of the pandemic. I think it's just good to be back here and see that everything's back to normal and it's not a state of emergency and, you know, complete chaos anymore. Having the military here was just unbelievable. Uh, I can't tell you how much you, the military, meant for us here. So thank you very much. Thank you for your service. Thank you for serving us and for taking care of us and for helping us fight this virus. But it's almost like having fought a war and now you have a military kind of reunion. Not to exaggerate, but we felt like it. I mean, it felt like it was a war. So it's great to have them back. They were instrumental in our fight against COVID. Staff Sergeant Gravano was interviewed for WABC TV on behalf of the team. The New York National Guard hosted experts from the Brazilian Army specializing in Seaburn from October 18th to 20th as part of the State Partnership Program. The exchange of best practices helps increase interoperability between the U.S. and Brazilian militaries and strengthens the partnership. New York City Guardsmen led civil support teams from across the country during the DHS Multi-Agency Urban Threat Disbursement Project in New York City from October 18th to the 29th to better understand how chemical and biological materials travel in a dense urban area. In community news, West Hampton Beach High School's Hurricane Watch TV show featured the 106 Rescue Wing, thanks to broadcast journalism student Madison Mosier, who visited the wing and interviewed some familiar faces. Members from the 106 once again took part in the annual Suffolk County Veterans Run series on October 24, 2021, running the half marathon. Senior Master Sergeant Kimberly Deshawn, who ran the 10K, took second place for the women's category. Window is open to submit your RIRP tuition assistance request for the spring 2022 semester. Deadline is firm at 15 December 2020, with no exceptions. See our Facebook page or contact Master Sergeant Lori Perno at 7454 for more information. It's time to fill out the 2022-23 free application for a federal student aid form. Even if you have the GI Bill, be smart and understand all of your options. Contact Paula Mucci for more information. Paula will also be hosting 10 virtual financial power hours via Zoom throughout November. See our Facebook page or contact Paula for details. Registration ends November 12th for our drive through Santa event, which will be held on Saturday, December 4th from 1100 to 1400. Members must register for this event. Contact Lisa D'Agostino, Airman and Family Readiness Program Manager, for more information. Veterans Day is almost here. Members past and present joined in an honor ruck October 19th to mark the 20th anniversary of the Global War on Terror and 30th anniversary of Desert Storm with our own PJ, retired Senior Master Sergeant Kevin Carrick, who will be presiding as the 2021 Grand Marshal of the New York City Veterans Day Parade. I stand here humbled to be speaking to a group of warriors in a memorial of heroes. After many rescues during my career, I never expected to be using my PJ skills in Manhattan on September 11, 2001. Searching for survivors of the largest attack on this country since Pearl Harbor, only this time they targeted civilians. As that day unfolded, it was evident we needed to be at Ground Zero. We were planning on moving into New York City with very limited support and resources available to us. Fortunately, Staff Sergeant Ken Smith, Tiny as we uh, called him, God rest his soul, a fellow PJ, arranged for us to hitch a ride from Floyd Bennett Field to Ground Zero with the NYPD Aviation Unit. 
Well, on final approach, the site looked like a smoldering void in the middle of a metropolis. Once on the ground, things seemed semi-normal, but as I turned the corner into the site, I saw a complete devastation. But the search for any sign of life under tons of debris was in full swing by the FDNY. Subdued by shock and exhaustion, they continued their focus on the victims. The toxic environment caused burning of the eyes and throat almost immediately. The guy next to me made a comment of not wanting to be there. And about that time, J.J. Baker, another fellow PJ, said, let's do what they're doing, which was a slow, methodical search for any sign of life. Other than finding one person alive the following day, it was becoming evident that we were now engaged in a recovery mission of extraordinary proportions. Over the next several days, the toxic conditions did not deter Americans from all over the country to get involved in many contributing ways. It was truly a display of patriotism for a country coming together for a common goal of helping fellow Americans in a time of need. Veterans are the backbone of our Constitution, and the oath we all take doesn't expire when we retire. You must always remember that. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. November, we honor National American Indian Heritage Month and reflect on their proud warrior tradition in our military history, from wind talkers to aviators and everything in between. November is also National Veterans and Military Families Month. 